You may already know that in Spanish, the word sombrero means hat. But if this is a sombrero, then what are you supposed to call this? Welcome to Ways of the World, a conversation about world language and culture. And this week we're talking about this hat. Uh, if the Spanish word sombrero just means any hat, because, you know, sombra means shadow, so the thing that casts a shadow over your face is a sombrero, but, so then how do you refer to these specific famous Mexican hats? So, in fact, it depends on what kind of sombrero you're talking about. Um, we'll back it up for a moment. So, in English, any wide-brimmed Mexican hat is called a sombrero, and that that's what it's called in German, French, Italian, uh, Indonesian, and Malay, and Hindi, and Urdu. Even in Portuguese, you would think Portuguese would use like a word like sombrero for hat, like Spanish does, because it's right, Portugal's right next door to Spain, and Brazil is right next door to a bunch of Spanish speaking countries. But uh, the Portuguese word is, I, I think it's. Uh, chapeau it's closer to the french and uh they use sombrero to mean the mexican hat uh catalan uh also they just say mexican hat actually uh so does chinese uh lots of languages just say mexican hat uh and the only other major language i could find where sombrero means any kind of hat not just the mexican one is in tagalog they, they got their word for hat from the Spanish, uh, except they spell it like this. Uh, so what do they say in Mexico? Um, the go-to name is sombrero de charro. A, a charro is someone who competes in a charreada, which is like the Mexican version of a rodeo. Uh, the, the events are mostly the same anyway, uh, and but they do wear those hats. Uh, so the, that's the most common name is sombrero de charro, but they're not all sombreros de charro. For example, uh, if it's a, like a fancy velvet sombrero like the mariachi musicians wear, then it's a sombrero de mariachi uh, and uh, so on. They, they have various types. Anyway, uh, for sure, I'm not a native Spanish speaker, but if you are, please do leave something in the comments about what you think about how the rest of the world discusses this most famous of hats. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting to see what certain famous things in cultures are called in the languages of those cultures. So like, for example, uh, you know, in English, we call this the Sphinx, uh, you know, from the Greek name. Um, it was the name of a monster uh, in Greek mythology. Sphinx means strangler, apparently, uh, which was how this monster killed its prey. Um, but it, it, it's, we get the word sphincter from the same root because s like a sphincter is a muscle that constricts a valve, it kind of strangles it. Anyway, it's not certain who or what the statue was supposed to be. So we don't know what the ancient Egyptians called it, but the modern Egyptians who speak Arabic uh, call it Abul Hul, which means the father of terror, or the father of dread. Uh, I guess it was probably scarier back in the old days uh, before it was such a tourist hot spot. Uh, another uh, example is uh, the Forbidden City in Beijing, China, uh, where the, the Ming and Qing dynasty emperors lived. In Mandarin Chinese, uh, it's called the Purple Forbidden City. It's a Jinchang, uh, with the color purple having some special astrological meaning. Uh, and the Great Wall of China is just called the Long Fort, Changchang. Uh, likewise, the Yangtze River is called Changjiang, which is the Long River. That's it. Um, if you go to Paris and see the Mona Lisa, uh, you'll notice uh, they call it La Jaconde in French. Uh, the painting is of Lisa del Jacondo. Uh, Mona Lisa is like short for Madonna Lisa, meaning something like Milady Lisa and Giocondo was her married name. Uh, so in Italian, or the northern Italian dialect that she and Leonardo da Vinci spoke, I guess, 
uh, jocondo means playful. And so she has, you know, that smile going on. And so they called the painting La Jaconda, meaning the playful one. And this is La Jaconde in French. Anyway, we could go on and on. Um, like uh, Kremlin, uh, the Kremlin in Moscow, Kremlin, it just means a fortress or a citadel. If you capitalize it, then it means the one in Moscow. Um, likewise, Sputnik, uh, the name of the first satellite in space, right? Sputnik uh, just means satellite. They didn't give it any special name. It's just satellite. Uh, so, you know, if you have some interesting literal names of famous cultural icons, uh, please do leave them in the comments. Um, it's all, and also uh, other languages referring to stuff in English speaking culture, but using a different wording. Um, so like an example of this would be like in Chinese, uh, they call San Francisco uh, which means old gold mountain. Uh, I guess because uh, maybe uh, some Chinese speakers uh, went out there to pan for gold in the gold rush. Um, also, uh, Chinese speakers call Elvis Presley Ma Wang, which means the Cat King, because a lot of teenagers used to scream at his concerts. And so maybe some Chinese people thought it sounded like a bunch of cats crying out to their king. Uh, but uh, actually, Chinese used to have a lot of those kind of sort of silly nicknames for foreign celebrities. Um, the worst is uh, for Frank Sinatra. Uh, they called him Shou Pi Hao. I still do, I guess, call him Shou Pi Hao, Skinny Skin Monkey, because uh, he was very skinny back in the 1930s when his career took off. And uh, that's probably when he first caught the notice of people in China. Um, but let's leave it there. Thank you, as always, for watching and making the world your thing. And if there's anything you want to add or if there's something I got wrong, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, and, of course, if you like the video, uh, please click like. It means a lot. And if you want to see more, then please subscribe. And I'll see you next week.